What a time to be alive, huh? Um, man, in real time, I'm getting updates from friends uh, from Ukraine. You see the flag behind me again this week. Um, I've got family in West Africa getting updates from them on stuff that's going on there. Um, I've got friends in Kansas City area, Atlanta area, all kinds of places in the U.S. Uh, sending me what God's doing there, prayer requests, keeping up. And it's just so cool to be connected like that. So this week is week nine of our Something to Believe in series, and and I called it, Should I Tell Them? And we're going to talk about how we are called to share our faith. We're called to uh, share the greatest story ever with people around us. Um, They need the good news. If we've got it, why wouldn't we want them to have it as well? Um, And so it's, it's up to us to share the story. And I'm going to read, even though I could quote them, I'm going to read a couple of passages that are going to kind of serve as our launching point for tonight. The Great Commission is found in Matthew 28, the end of Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Starting in verse 18, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And then one of the very last uh, instances that we see Jesus before he went back to heaven Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. We're called to be that. We're called to take the message. We're called to tell them. I titled this message, Should I Tell Them? Sean Gross has a song called Should I Tell Them? And it's about the, the, the trepidation he felt as a songwriter. Should I tell them about Jesus? What should I tell them? God, can you take my fragile words and songs and whatever and communicate your message, communicate your gospel, communicate your hope? We're called to share a faith. Why should that matter? Well, if statistics are to be believed, a very high percentage of people, and I've seen anywhere up to 90%, but usually it's in the 75-80% range, people come to know Christ before age 18 to 20, somewhere in that neighborhood, and statistically, only about 2 people, two two percent of people, not 2 people, only about 2% of people ever lead someone to Christ. And that's a shame. So why should this matter? Well, first, because Jesus told us to share with others. We're told to go and make disciples. We're told to go and tell. We're told to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, all over the world, to reach people with the hope of the gospel, to reach people with the good news of Jesus. It's a call. It's a challenge to be his witness, to share the good news, to be his messenger to every part of our world. Some people say, well, I can't reach everyone. You're right. But it's like the old starfish illustration where a man's walking down the beach throwing starfish into the ocean, and a man said, what are you doing? You can't possibly save everyone. You can't possibly help everyone. He's like, no, maybe I can't, but I can help this one, and he tosses another one. I can help this one, and he tosses another. And God has placed each of us in unique circumstances, unique situations where we can impact and reach, be his messenger, be his witness to those that God's placed in our lives. So Jesus told us to share with others. It also matters because if we don't tell them, how will they know? Romans 10 says, uh, basically says, how will they know unless someone tells them, unless someone's sent, unless someone goes to them? Very few people find Jesus totally randomly on their own. I mean, sometimes people open up a hotel Bible or turn on a, a religious show, but it doesn't happen very often. Most people have someone share with them. Most people have someone do whatever it takes to get them to Jesus, to get them to where the good news is. If we don't care enough to try to share with them, how will they ever know? Most people who come to know Christ is because of someone Maybe someone else will share. We could say that. But honestly, how how can we take that chance? And why would we not want to be the one to help them find them? Why would we not want to, to know that joy? How will they know unless someone tells? And the third reason it matters, if we really care about those in our lives, shouldn't we have an urgency to let them know? The Bible says that, that our days are not infinite. Time is running out. We aren't infinite. At some point, the whole world will end, but at some point, each of our lives will end as well. Scripture says today is the day of salvation. We have to have that sense of urgency. So if we really care, shouldn't we have an urgency to let them know? So how can we do this? Well, I'm going to talk through it in three stages. And the first is this, initiate relationships with people who need Jesus. Open a door by developing common ground. Meet people on their level. 1 Corinthians 9.22 says, I've become all things to all men that by all means I might reach some. Find common ground. Finding common ground earns the right to talk to them. Find things you have in common. If you like sports, if you like video games, if you like music, talk about family. Meet at a coffee shop. Hang out at the coffee shop. Go fishing. Go hunting. Things like that. Finding common ground initiates a relationship and it opens a door. It gives us an end to earn the right 
to share. It's a lot easier, much, much more enjoyable than cold hit evangelism is. Second thing, show people you genuinely care. Someone once said hospitality is evangelism's greatest tool. You can never win to Christ someone that you don't love, that you don't care about. When we meet needs, we show that we care. When we listen, we show that we care. When we treat people right, we show that we care. We act like we're interested in them. We act like we're interested in their lives, not just that they're another notch in our belt. We act like we care about them, not just their eternal condition, but we do care about that. Then we show Jesus and we show them something that opens a door for us, that, that gives them an opportunity to see that there's something they're missing. And the third part of this is uncovering their story. Find out their background. Find out their spiritual background. Find out their interest in God. Find out if there's an interest in spiritual things. Get a feel for their church background. Um, find out if they have an interest in him, if they even care about him. And that helps create an interest in spiritual things. So that gives us the opportunity to do the second step, which is to share our story. Testimony is a great initial way to share our faith. The personal story of how you came to know Christ is a non-threatening way to witness. In Acts 26, Paul took advantage of sharing with his accusers. He's in court on trial, and he just shares his story. He just shares his testimony, how he encountered Jesus in a very real way. Everybody has a story, and it doesn't have to be some gruesome, I killed 14 people and was on drugs, $300,000 a day, whatever type thing. Um, we don't necessarily have to have that coming out of this, coming into Jesus type story. It's just your story about how you found Jesus, what a difference he's made, and it's your story. And nobody can really argue with that. It's non-threatening. It's your story of Jesus impacting your life. A testimony involves your story before Christ, your life before Christ, your story of how you met Christ, how you came to encounter him, and your life because of Jesus, how, you, how, how meeting him has made a difference in your life. The simplest format for testimony is what was your life like before Christ? How did you encounter Christ? And how has he made a difference? What is it like now? Again, it doesn't have to be some dramatic, crazy story, just how he's changed your mind, your life, your attitude, your heart, and gave you hope and gave you purpose. Third part of this is do whatever it takes to bring them to Jesus. There's a couple of stories, uh, Mark 2 and John 4. Uh, John 4 is a Samaritan woman. Mark 2 is um, the, the men who took their crippled friend onto the roof and down through the roof to Jesus. People did whatever it took to get their friends to Jesus. The Samaritan woman, once she found out about Jesus, she left her water pot behind, went and told people and brought them back and brought them to Jesus. The guys went up on top of a house, cut a hole in the house, brought, Je brought their friend down to Jesus. They refuse to be stopped, and we need to be the same way. We want to do whatever it takes to bring our friends to Jesus. We need to do the same as these guys did. At the very least, we should care enough about them to bring them to church because we know that the gospel is going to be presented there. At least we hope it is. It is here at London First Baptist and in our youth group for sure. Bring them to church where the gospel will be presented, where they'll hear about Jesus, where they'll hear their need. If we're not going to tell them ourselves, at least get them to places where they'll hear about them. So the third part of this is sharing Jesus' story. So we've talked about their story, we've talked about our story, and now we're talking about Jesus' story of rescue. His story is the life-changing, difference-making gospel. These, these guys in Acts chapter 4 told the rulers who were questioning them that they couldn't help talking about Jesus, what they had seen, what they had heard, because it made a difference in their lives, because it is the greatest story ever, because people need to know about it. And when we have good news, we want to share it, right? I mean, we want to talk about a new boyfriend or girlfriend. We want to talk about a new car that we bought, a new job, a um, vacation that we're going on. We want to share good news. We don't want to hold it in. We do it with other stuff, so why shouldn't we do it with the greatest news ever? There's a skit that I'm going to have my youth group do when we talk about this um, about uh, a girl sitting there with a flower. He loves me, he loves me not. And he loves me, he really loves me. And the other person comes in and says, who loves you, who loves you? And she says, Jesus, he really loves me. And the first person, or the second person says, oh, I could have told you that. And the first person says, then why didn't you? And it's boom, it's hard hitting like that. His story is that much of a difference maker, and he loves us. Why shouldn't we want other people to? Second thing, his story is hope and provision for lost souls. Our problem is that we're all sin, and the, uh, we're all sinners, and the punishment for sin is death and hell. But the good news is that while we were still sinners, God sent Jesus as a provision for us. There was provision made before our need in the person of Jesus. Salvation comes through him alone. He's the only way. He's the ransom. He's, ransom. He's the payment. He's the way out. It's only through trusting by faith in his grace gift that we can... Uh, have done for us what we can't do for ourselves. He's the hope for rescue of lost souls. Our part, the third thing here, is our part is to receive that gift. The only part of the equation that's ours is we choose to receive the gift that's offered, to place our faith in the gift, to place our faith in the sacrifice and his atonement for, for our sins. It's made available to everyone, but it's not automatic until we receive it. A gift is no good unless the person to whom it's offered chooses to accept the offer. That's our part. We accept the offer that Jesus has given to us. It's a life and death decision. 
If we choose him, we have life. If we don't, we spend eternity apart from God in a place called hell. The only part of the story that involves us is to accept the gift. So how can we wrap this up? It's the duty, it's the privilege of every follower of Christ and every church of Jesus to seek the lost, to make disciples. It's our responsibility to seek to win the lost to Christ through our lifestyle, but also through verbal witness of the hope that we have through Jesus. A passion for Jesus becomes a passion for telling others and getting them to Jesus. So ask yourself, do you care about your friend's eternal destiny? If you do, you have to tell them about Jesus. If they still reject him, there's nothing you can do but hope and pray and trust in God about it. But at least you're affording them the opportunity to hear about him. If we truly care about them, we have to tell them about Jesus. And if we don't, who will? Don't wait. Do whatever it takes. Risk whatever you have to risk to give them a chance to hear about Jesus, the most important story they'll ever hear.